I said I'm in Rome and I'm trying to, to say this right. I am at the Pontificium Institutum Altiores Latini. That is maybe I made a mistake, but our colleagues today are going to tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, good morning, Monsieur uh, Miran Sajovic, Principal Dean at the Institute, and Roberto Spataro, Professor at the same Institute. Good morning. Good How morning. are you? Fine, thanks. Fine, thanks. So tell us to start with. What is the Pontificium Institutum Altioris Latinitatis? So this is the institute founded by Holy See, exactly by Pope uh, Paul the Sixth. It's academic institution, so like a faculty. We are a faculty, so we we have lessons of Latin language of. Latin literature, also the Greek, and um, our, our duty is also to conserve the speaking Latin and writing Latin, and also to we have a focus on the didactic of Latin classical languages. So Latin is not dead, right? Not at all. <coughs> Of course, it depends on what we mean for a dead language. If we mean for a dead language, a language that is no more spoken in the market, in the shops, to ask information on train schedule, of course, we can say that Latin is dead because it's no more used for this kind of purposes. But Latin is a living language and I would like to say an immortal language for at least a couple of reasons. The first is that uh, countless people, among uh, them uh, many young people, keep on studying, on being fascinated by this language. And uh, another reason that uh, there is a growing number of people all over the world uh, who use still Latin as a spoken language, as a mean of communication. And also, uh, of course, those who use Latin as a spoken language use it also to write in this beautiful language. Can you give us some examples of uh, places where it's uh, spoken? I mean, because we think of the Vatican, but I'm sure there are more places. Willingly, willingly. But apart from the Vatican, on which we can say something more later on, I would like to mention other institutions uh, uh, in which Latin is used as a living and spoken language. First of all, the Academia Latinitati Fovende is an association uh, which encompasses scholars from all over the world, uh, very specialist in uh, Latin, and uh, whenever they meet for the annual or periodical uh, um, conferences, uh, the only language used is Latin, also for informal conversation. Uh, last summer, for instance, I took part in an international conference organized by um, Academia Latinitati Fovende in the States. And uh, we were about uh, 100 people, the majority of them young people. The only language that we used was Latin. And we were happy because we could understand each other this language. Apart from Academia Latinitati Fovende, I would like to mention also other pockets, I would like to say, uh, of uh, um, people. Uh, among them, the Academia Vivarium Novum. It is an educational institution located here um, in uh, nearby Rome. Uh, and uh, in this uh, educational institution, classes uh, on humanities, of course, are held only in Latin. 
and the students coming from all over the world they use only Latin also for the informal, the daily conversation. Therefore, Latin is still a spoken language. I, I have just given a couple of examples, but I can multiply that. Yes, maybe we can also say about the Feria Latine. Of course. Yeah, yes. the Latine in summer, short courses, when came different students, professors together, mm -hmm. for one week example, <clears throat> for example, and they speak every day in Latin language. Or in some cities we have also so-called circuli, circuli, Latin eloquence, mm -hmm. where are the groups who meet once or months and they speak in Latin languages, Latin language. <clears throat> and no need of translations of interpreters. Yeah. <laughs> yes. no, of course yeah. not. And what about the Vatican? The Vatican, yes, the Vatican. <laughs> the Vatican. We can say that the, the Vatican is the only state all over the world in which still the official language is Latin. Because still today, uh, the most important documents issued by the Vatican departments are officially uh, written in Latin and uh, in Acta Apostolica said it, that is to say the official journal of the Vatican, these documents are reported in Latin. So this is uh, a reason uh, for which we can say that in the Vatican uh, the official language is still Latin. We, in the recent times, uh, just an example, uh, Pope Francis issued a very um, important uh, document uh, entitled Amoris Laetitia. The official version of this document is in uh, Latin. So, Latin is used in the Vatican uh, uh, for um, this purpose. Then there are um, some departments uh, in which uh, Latin is used for um, writing uh, other types of documents. Just an example, when uh, um, someone is declared saint, the official documents concerning the canonization of one saint are uh, written in Latin. Or the, um, uh, Courts, the tribunals in the Vatican, uh, usually uh, they um, issue the sentences or other relevant documents in Latin. So, at least as a written language, uh, Latin is kept in the Vatican. As a spoken language, I would like to say no more. Once, uh, when ecclesiastical people uh, used to meet in the Vatican, coming from different countries, um, they um, were used to adopt Latin as a common mean of communication, because Latin was very well known by all the priests. But after the um, Second Vatican Council, when a liturgy was uh, uh, in the, the, the um, vernacular languages were introduced in liturgy. Uh, when uh, the um, books, the handbooks of philosophy, theology, just to say the, 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 the matters uh, that the, the, the future priests uh, study, and so were uh, no more in Latin, but in, the, in other national languages. The knowledge of Latin um, diminished, diminished more and more among the, the priests uh, to such an extent that uh, um, priests usually are no more able to communicate in Latin. Still today, there are some laws of Latin in the Vatican who are able to speak in Latin, but just for their own pleasure. How many people do you think these people are? I, I suppose that um, around 100 of them. For instance, there is a, a department 
in the Vatican, the Office of uh, Latin uh, Language at the Secretary of State, where the Pope's documents are written in Latin. So, the officials of this department, among them, they use, are used to speak in Latin, uh, but mm, they are more than uh, 10. And uh, in other departments, here and there, there are uh, some uh, priests uh, who love Latin and are able to use also for uh, living uh, use. Okay, so, I mean, the Latin is an official language, but it's Italian, the language they use yes, most? Yes, of course, the, 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 the most uh, used language in the Vatican is Italian. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, yes, because, mm, first of all, Italian is a beautiful language. And I realized that the um, priests coming from over the world and who live here in, in Rome, uh, they like very much uh, not only learning but also speaking Italian. So this is a, a, a natural reason. Then really the Vatican is placed and surrounded uh, by the Italian uh, society, culture. Uh, so actually Italian is the most uh, used language in the Vatican as a, a mean of oral uh, uh, communication for meetings, for conferences, and also for um, a certain amount of written documents as well. When you talk about meetings and conferences, what kind of meetings do they have? Uh, how many languages do they use? Just Latin? Or can one speak English, French, German, other that kind of multilingual meetings mm. in the Vatican? Mm, so, I mm, would like to distinguish. So, in the Vatican, or for Vatican uh, conferences, uh, um, many languages are used. Uh, the common, uh, the most common European languages, Italian, English, French, Spanish, and uh, German. At the times, so there are also uh, simultaneous uh, translators, uh, um, an example, when uh, uh, there was the last uh, synod of bishops about family, um, the majority of the synodal fathers, uh, uh, they uh, used to speak in Italian. And there were uh, also <coughs> simultaneous translators for those who do not don't master Italian or do not or do, do not know Italian at all. Some other uh, fathers uh, uh, spoke in English or in French, and there were translators. This is for the Vatican meetings, but for other association, uh, societies, as I uh, was mentioning just before, Latin is used as the, the language. And, uh, I mean, thinking of Latin again, mm. Latin could be a way to avoid all these languages in these meetings, because now we have no uh, English somehow to you know, replace uh, everything. What do you yeah. think of that? Of course, of course, of course. In my personal opinion, when the Catholic Church left apart the use of Latin as a living language, the Catholic Church became poorer. Because uh, probably there is no institution, international institution, all over the, the world, uh, like the Catholic Church, that includes people from any country. So the, the, the knowledge of a common language uh, is indispensable. And this reason was also reaffirmed and restated um, by Pope John Paul, uh, John the 23rd, for instance, in the um, uh, document uh, that he issued in 1962, entitled Veterum Sapientia. In this document, of course, uh, uh, almost uh, uh, six years ago, 
The Pope said the Catholic Church needs Latin for many reasons and one of the reasons was just this one, a common language for an international institution. At the last synod of the bishops, I have been told that some bishops misunderstood also the content of the discussions because uh, um, in spite of uh, simultaneous translations, or in case they uh, did not use uh, translations, some of them could not catch the, the real meaning of what was being discussed. Therefore, the knowledge of Latin language uh, is still indispensable in the Catholic Church. And talking about interpreters, tell me, which skills do you think a good interpreter should have? So, uh, I have not an, an expert in this field, but I suppose, first of all, a good interpreter um, has to master, have a, a perfect command of both, both of the languages. Uh, then, in, at least, a general knowledge of the topic that, he, uh, that should be uh, translated. And also, um, I would like to, to say, uh, wit, <laughs> in, in, in order to, 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 to uh, um, uh, interpret not only the, the, the uh, actual meaning of the words, but also the context of what uh, is um, discussed in the, in the meeting in which he is part as interpreter. Good. I have one last question. Well, thank you very much to start with. But when you hear your students saying studying Latin is a waste of time, what do you say to them when they say it's a waste of time? What would you say to their parents? Mm, yes. Actually, this is a question that very often I listen to. But uh, before this question, there is a previous question. What is meaningful in human life? If the purpose of our life is just uh, to uh, gain money, uh, to have a good position, in the society, I can agree that studying Latin is a waste of time. But if the purpose of our life is different, if the purpose of our life is becoming more and more human people, the so-called humanities are indispensable. And among humanities there is, of course, the study of Latin language, because Latin language is the idiom in which and by which an mm, immense treasure of human wisdom has been formulated throughout the centuries. And Latin is the key to enter into this treasure and to draw teaching uh, that allow human people to become more human. Latin is the, 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 the language of immortal thinkers and wise men. Uh, Seneca, the philosopher, Virgil, the poet, and throughout St. Augustine, St. Thomas, uh, uh, throughout the centuries, uh, uh, countless people have expressed the death of um, their wisdom in this language. Uh, it is impossible to understand Shakespeare without n knowing English and English of 16th century. Uh, it is impossible to understand the masterpieces of uh, this uh, uh, treasure that is the Latin literature throughout the centuries uh, without uh, knowing the language itself. Well, thank you very much. Could you, to finish, well, first, thank you, I've said it, but could you please say something in Latin to say bye to all the people 
watching oh, us oh, and oh, uh, showing that the the, the well, language is alive. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can speak a little Latin. Yes, yes, why not? Oh, yes. Su. Uh, <laughs> salve Domine. Oh, salve colendissime uh, Pater, et uh, tibi plaquit ec per contatio, quam uh, illustrissima et humanissima uh, domina nuperrime nobis proposuit, uh, mi valde plaquit. Ah, mi vale plaquit. Et iam, le, et iam interrogata, ben selecta eram. Oh. Optime, in tuam convenio sententiam, e si mi uh, liciat velim allo qui omnes inspecturos et auditurus anche per contazionem, et velim eis dicere latina lingua est pulcherima, nobilissima, Dignitate maxima ornata et maestate quadam onestata. <laughs> et quam obrem nobis valde placet? Et uh, nobis placet lingua latina, uh, quia est instrumentum per quod possumus leggere opera immortalia, que veteres nobis tradiderunt in quibus in venimus sententias refertas alta sapientia. Exempli gratia, legimus quadam in fabula cui titulus est e autontim rumenus, legimus anche sententia pulcherima. Homo sum, umani nil, a me alienum putro. And this was said in Latin. We are human beings and we become more and more human beings to Latin. Yeah.